was ready for that big Manny Pacquiao upset. For the second straight video, I can't believe you people don't see this. Oscar De La Hoya and Saul Alvarez have been talking about each other for weeks, for months. And I expected, uh, I expected to continue throughout July. I can't believe y'all aren't seeing this. They're going to fight Cinco de Mayo 2022. And guess what? They're all in on it. Oscar De La Hoya, the boxer, is in on it. Oscar De La Hoya, the promoter, is in on it. Saul Alvarez, the boxer, is in on it. And Eddie Hearn, the promoter, is in on it. They're going to fight. You guys just don't know it yet. And um, as I stated in the last video, my buddy asked me, well, what are you talking about? How, how's it going to play out? And I'm going to tell you again. How the whole thing's going to go. When they fight, Alvarez is going to be a little off that night. Okay, he'll win the fight. But then he'll go on to say that Oscar did a lot of old school veteran tricks and kind of threw him off a bit. And he'll take his hat off to Oscar. One of the cards will be 115, 113. Another card will be 116, 112. Then they'll interview Oscar. Oscar will say... I thought I won the fight. That's what he'll say. And then months later, you'll hear, you'll hear that Alvarez is back with Golden Boy. Guess what? He never left Golden Boy. I'm telling you, this is all a ploy to make it seem like they are enemies. Once again, when Richard Schaefer and Alan Heyman, when they kind of stole those Golden Boy fighters... Oscar kept a few fighters. Some said they'd rather stay with Golden Boy. Others said they didn't really care which way they went, so they, they wound up staying too. And he kept his cash cow, Saul Alvarez. So Golden Boy promotions is, is, is just where its neck is above water right now, okay? So why would they give up their top moneymaker so easily? It, it, it was like they just said, okay, like we released him. Doesn't make sense. I'll tell you why they did it. Because he's still with them behind the scenes. Come on, he, he wants out of his deal. People say, well, he did it to get out of his deal. Alvarez, and then who does he fight with twice? The zone. So it it doesn't make sense. So listen, Oscar will take a tune up in his first fight, and he so he's fighting this MMA guy, and then he'll call Jermel Charlo out after he wins, and then Nello. He'll make a smart comment towards Oscar and nobody will be talking about Charlo then. Everybody will be talking about how Nello said something about Oscar. Well, then the fight will be on, right? Well, more proof to my theory has come in. Oscar De La Hoya fights September 11th in Las Vegas. Follow me. Every year during a big fight, they have something called the Box Fan Expo. Look it up, Box Fan Expo. And all the old fighters, current fighters, they'll come sign autographs, sell t-shirts, whatever. I mean, Thomas Hearns comes every year. Uh, Errol Spence Jr. was at the last one. Um, Teofimo Lopez was there. Uh, James Tony, Riddick Bowe, um, Fernando Vargas comes every year. Floyd Mayweather Jr. pops up whenever he feels like it each year. You never know when he's going to walk in. Um, Badu Jack, uh, Kevin Kelly, the list goes on. I mean, it's well attended every year. So they always have it during Cinco de Mayo weekend, right? Or the Mexican, like in September, the Mexican independence or what have you. 
Oscar De La Hoya fights September 11th. 1-1, one, one, okay? 9-1-1. The Box Fan Expo occurs September 18th in Vegas. You don't have the Box Fan Expo unless there's a big fight in Las Vegas. So why would you have it the week after Oscar De La Hoya fights? De La Hoya fights September 11th. Box Fan Expo occurs September 18th. Why would you have it a week after Oscar fights an MMA guy? You would try to push it on the 11th, the weekend of the 11th, right? It makes no sense. Unless Alvarez fights Plant a week later. I predict you're not hearing this anywhere. Saul Alvarez will fight Caleb Plant on September 18th, one week after Oscar De La Hoya. And the Box Fan Expo will be that weekend, the weekend of September 18th. Okay? If he doesn't fight Caleb Plant, I still believe that Saul Alvarez will fight September 18th in Las Vegas. Once again, you're not going to have the Box Fan Expo unless there's a big fight in Vegas. Not a week after a big fight, but big fight weekend. Somebody knows something. Oscar wins on the 11th. Nello wins on the 18th. Oscar shows up and makes some crude remarks about Nello's win over Plant or whoever he's going to fight. Just as Nello made... Uh, derogatory comments about Oscar's win. So once Oscar says what he has to say, Canelo's going to say, if you got a problem with it, Oscar, why don't you fight me? And there we have it, folks. Cinco de Mayo 2022. It's on. Let's move on. Vasily Lomachenko and Javante Davis got big wins last weekend. Okay, both of them looked impressive. For Davis... I like to see him in with uh, stiffer competition. For the record, Davis is a two-time champion in one weight class, not a four-time champion in three weight classes. Let me say it again. Davis is a two-time champion in one weight class, not a four-time champion in three weight classes. I just want to make sure people understand that, okay? Secondary belts do not matter. All this WBA regular... Nah. No. No. On top of that sham, someone told me his promoter said he's just going to put him in with uh, PBC guys. Now, if that's true, it's it's disturbing. Um, if you hear a noise, that's my air condition blowing in the background. Uh don't currently have central air where I'm at so anyway so if that's true what's like what's out there for him if he's just gonna fight premier guys now he's probably finished at 130 pounds and that would have given us a Chris Colbert fight which I would have I would have liked Colbert's too small but it would have given him that um Or uh, Gary Russell Jr. fight, which Russell's too small, Russell Jr., but I, I would have given it. But what about Gary Antoine Russell? It might be a little too early, but that's something I would have liked. Not at this weight. We would have to go up. But that's what Chris Colbert, Gary Russell Jr., that's pretty much it. I mean, what are you going to do? Bring, like, <laughs> anyway, at 135. Not much more. I think Richard Comey and, and Javier Fortuna might be like free agents who can fight on any network, including Premier. Um, I don't know. I don't know. At 140, you got the Easter Bunny, Robert Easter Jr. You got Rancis Bartholomew. You got hard-hitting Subriel Matias. Now, would they risk a fight with a guy like him? Probably not. 
Um, isn't Regis, wait a minute, wait a minute. Isn't it uh, uh, Regis Progre? Isn't he able to fight with Premier now? I thought he 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 was kind of like a free agent and he mentioned Premier at one point. Not sure about that one. That would be a good, good fight if they did it. But would they risk it? I don't think they would. So where do you go? Uh, well, do you fight a bunch of mandatories? I mean, is that, that what we're doing here? Because there's a guy at 140 named Josh Taylor with five belts, if you count the ring. I think he got the ring belt. Why not make that and try for Undisputed at 140? Um, I tell you, Joe Gans, Ray Robinson, Sam Langford, all have to be rolling over in their graves at this point. With the, we're just with the picking and choosing. I mean, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. As far as his fight last weekend for Davis, I'd like to see him throw more combinations and not load up on the big shots as much as he did. He got the, he got the kid out of there, but one day he's going to be behind on the car. Like he should have been on Saturday, despite what the judges had. And he'll have a higher class of competition, an elusive guy that he can't catch with that late big shot. And if he's down on the cards, he's going to lose a decision unless boxing's shenanigans keep going on. Um... But otherwise, it was an, a, a, a very impressive win against a limited guy. I don't think um, Mario Barrios had enough offense to keep him off. Uh, he did early, but I think that was just Javante kind of looking for that opening, kind of biding his time, if you will. And as um, the fight went on and as Barrios kind of faded a little bit he went on the attack got him out Lomachenko he was equally as impressive um, I was on press row when Teofimo Lopez fought Nakatani and many ringside thought Nakatani won the fight they never said it though on their podcast on their YouTube channels on their Websites out of fear of not getting credential. I don't know what it looked like on television, but live, it looked like it could have went either way. And Lopez knew it too, but I'll get into that another time. Well, in this fight, Loma left no doubt as he sent a message to the world and let us know who was boss. For Lomachenko, he still seems to allow himself to get hit with the straight right. And um, Nakatani doesn't have one-punch knockout power, despite his high uh, KO ratio. However, as Loma gets older and gets hit a little bit more, the straight right seems to get through more than you like, if you're a fan of his. So hopefully that's something they can fix, but... At this late in the game. <laughs> Let's move on. Um, there are two good heavyweight fights coming up. The first fight between Frank Sanchez, 18-0, 13 knockouts. And F.A. Ajagba, 15-0, 12 knockouts. Right? Somebody's old got to go. Both guys are under 30 years old, uh, we think. With Frank being six foot four with a seventy eight inch reach and a jog bus six foot six with an eighty five inch reach, that is crazy. Um, this is this fight is interesting. Uh, it, it'll be on the Fury versus Wilder three undercard. Um, a jog he's 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 very raw, and he's smartly acquired the services of Ronnie. Okay, okay, okay. Shields. If you know Ronnie Shields from the corner, then you understand the okay thing. 
But anyway, I think um, Ajagba, he looked better in his last outing and, and all and and um, in a lot of ways now, of course, with, I mean, there were some, we'll call them, uh, <laughs> we'll call them uh, complications maybe. Um, but he uh, he overcame the storm, and, and that's we're just not sure that's what would have happened, or, or had he not been under the uh, tutelage of um, Shields. Now, although Sanchez has only 18 fights himself, I'm not sure FA. I'm not sure he's ready for this. I could be wrong. All right, for Sanchez, it's said that he has an amateur record of 214 wins and six losses, right? But then you go to one website, and they have him at 41 wins and 12 losses. And they actually list all the wins and the losses and who he fought. So who do you believe? Ajagba is said to have a 41 and 2 amateur record with 30 knockouts. But then one website says... He was 12 and 2. And it shows the name of all opponents and the outcomes. So, who do you believe? I think this fight is going to be a battle of jabs. I think Sanchez is more uh, technically proficient as he uses his quick jab and he moves pretty good, pretty well. A jog bar is more flat footed. And as I stated, he seems to be getting better with each fight. I saw him. A while back, I'm like, this guy's nothing. But he's late bloomer, man. He's coming along. So I, I think this is an excellent matchup because we're, we're going to learn about each guy after this one. Okay? And then you add Jared Big Baby Anderson, who's also on the card. So it's going to be a night of heavyweights. Um, you add Jared Anderson who's a top ranked guy so we're breaking bread once again this third go around we, we, we break bread with some top ranked guys and some premier guys So, uh, but if you add names like Jared Anderson, Joe Joyce, Tony Yoka Alexander Usyk Michael Hunter Marat Gassiev Flip Robit um, or Govic I should say uh Cassius Cheney, Trevor Bryan, Daniel Dubois, Zili Lang, Zili, ooh, excuse me, Zili Zhang, big six foot six heavyweight to the mix. And a couple of these names will rise to get a title shot eventually. As far as Trevor Bryan, just like Javante Davis, the WBA is trying to pass Trevor Bryant off as a champion Trevor Bryan is not a champion it's a secondary belt so whoever he fights whether it be Shannon Briggs who's been rumored or someone I, I, I one of the aforementioned guys um, they'll sanction it as a title fight so we'll see oh by the way Eddie Hearn has AJ and Usyk scheduled for two weeks after De La Hoya, which further has me believing something big goes down in Vegas, September 18th. See, they leave that date open. You got De La Hoya on the 11th. You got uh, AJ and Usyk um, on the uh, 25th, which leaves the 18th open. I'm telling you, Saul Alvarez is going to fight somebody on September 18th. Um, the other heavyweight fight is also on Fury Wilder 3. And it's a rematch. This is a can't miss fight in terms of entertainment. Robert Hellenius upset Adam Kalnacki and gave him his first loss via or via a fourth round TKO last year, right before things shut down. I think this was uh, March 
February, March of uh, 2020. I mean, they went at it. And I think Cal Nagy would have been okay had he been around 255 to 260 pounds in weight and not 266. Because I believe it was just enough weight for him not to, to give that slight movement he ordinarily does, whether he's on the attack or he's trying to get into defensive mode. He seemed to wobble more than move. And I think that extra weight got him. That and the fact that surely he felt Hellenius was past it. And Robert made him pay. This fight is a can't miss. And a win may leapfrog Kalnagi over the aforementioned names of those other other heavyweights into a title shot based on his style and the fact that he draws a big crowd mainly Polish supporters to every fight I mean they wear their red t-shirts and uh, with whatever message they have usually they have his name either on the front or the back and I mean they get loud so I can't wait for this one uh, hopefully Fury doesn't pull out Ah, if he does, more on that later. Just remember where you heard it first. And just remember where you heard De La Hoya versus Alvarez first. And where you heard that I think Saul Alvarez is going to fight September 18th, a week after Oscar De La Hoya. Just to set this up, I'm telling you, I really think something's cooking. You don't hear anybody else talking about it. I said it in previous videos. And I'm saying it now. Catch you on the next one.